What's up everyone, Triple Crown 24 back at you. And today I'm introducing you to the newest series on the channel. And this is going to be the start of a pretty long series, but it's going to rank every single Topps design from 1952 to 2018. We're going to go through them all in separate videos, kind of talk about the sets from each year, look at the design of the cards, and I'm going to rank them. Now I've gone through the Google um, and the YouTube, kind of looked around for similar videos, and there wasn't too many that I saw that had a definitive list of all the designs ranked. There were a couple, but I figured this would be a fun thing to do. It's kind of a way to cater to all sections of my audience, I would say. So I know that we have some younger viewers who have really gotten into the uh, sets within the last few years, which I've actually really enjoyed a lot of the sets from the last few years. They are higher on my list. Then I know that there are a lot of vintage guys out there as well. There are plenty of uh, vintage sets in here as well. This list is uh, pretty mixed, and what we're going to be looking at is just basically it's going to be ranking the designs. So it has really nothing to do with the players that were in the set. Now we will look at some of the more iconic cards from the set. We'll kind of talk about, you know, the hobby impact at the time. It will be a little bit of a history lesson. Um, some disclaimers about it, though. So I basically wanted to get all these out of the way in a introductory video before we actually get into the actual series. So here is one of the disclaimers. I said 1952 to 2018 in the title of the video. That's not an oversight. Um, I know there was a 1951 set, but for those of you who don't know, it kind of looked like these cards. So here's an example of what a 1951 card looked like. This is obviously a reprint, otherwise I would not be handling it with my hands. But this is a Jimmy Fox so there are 45 cards in the set, and basically what you would do is you'd put these in a deck and you could play with your friends as a game. So basically if you got a single um, card, I forget who was the single, there were multiple players who had that, but you'd put your guy on first base if you drew that card. And then there were guys who were like an out, so you would get three outs and then it would be the new inning. So it was basically this old card game in the 51 set. And really it's these um, smaller cards, they're not really what I would consider a top space set. My apologies if there's loud noises in the background. We have a pop-up thunderstorm rolling in this afternoon. So really, these cards, I wouldn't really consider a set like the rest of them. And I think that, you know, this is a cool idea for the game, but really it's hard to compare them to another set. For example, here's a reprint of a Jackie Robinson from the 53 set, which has been used for the Topps Living set, this card design. And really, it's hard to compare these two because these are two different things, in my opinion. It's kind of like an apples and oranges thing. So for that purpose alone, the 1951 set will not be included in my rankings just because I don't think I can fairly grade it based on comparing it to the other cards. It did not have the same purpose as the other cards, I would say. These weren't um, really like a collectible card for the set. They were more so for a game. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that this is solely based on the design of the front of the cards. And I know that a lot of the vintage designs had better backs. I definitely agree with you guys on that. But really we're looking at you know what is the most appealing. And I would say the front of the card is the, is the most appealing. Um, and then the third thing here is that the rankings by no means reflect the actual checklist of players within the set. So it might seem that a lot of the sets that are towards the bottom of the list had a weaker checklist. That might be the case just because if you think of what was going on in baseball during the times that these sets were released and what kind of players were in the league, you might say, yeah, this would make sense that this set is lower. But actually that has nothing to do with it. It just happens to be that some of the worst designs, in my opinion, are <laughs> some of the years where the checklists weren't as good. Also keep in mind this is just solely based off of my opinion. I looked through these sets a lot. I looked through a lot of what other people had to say about the sets to kind of uh, look at some of the positives on the sets I was bearish on, look at some, or bullish on, and then look at some of the negatives as well. So what this will be is a 66 video series after this one, so 67 in total. Now we'll kind of examine all the sets individually. I'll also talk about um, TTMs of players in that set. I might show you some examples. In terms of the cards, I might have to pull out my secondary laptop to kind of show you guys some of the cards online. Basically right now what I'm doing is trying to put together a collection, the thunder is really rolling in now, um, of all the cards so I can actually show one off in person. 
However, just because some of the older cards I don't have right now, some of them will have to be these insert sets. So back in 2010, Tops did this Cards Your Mom Threw Out set. Just a little insert thing. So this just kind of talks about, you know, the card from that year. This one happens to be the 1953 Jackie Robinson, a very iconic card from the Tops Living set. So I have a few of those in there. That's, um, you know, some of them I do have the originals on. For example, here's a 1988 Tops Don Mattingly. That is an original. I have plenty of other originals in there, but I do want to have at least one physical card. Now, I know what you might be thinking is that this is not the same as an actual 1953 Tops, not to worry. I will say that for all the sets from 1952 to 2018, I have actually owned at least one card from each of those sets at one point in my life. Some of them I don't have anymore because I had to sell them to pay off some medical bills. But I have at least owned one of those cards, so I have been able to see them in person, you know, hold them, look at them. And that has really helped me um, determine the set. But just for the purposes of kind of showing off the card and talking about it, I am going to have to use some of the reprints on some of the sets to kind of, you know, talk about my points with that kind of stuff. So that's my introduction video. The first video I plan on releasing either tomorrow, which is Friday, or the day after, which would be Saturday. From there, what we'll kind of do is, you know, recent, release them periodically. They'll probably be two to three a week. They won't, you know, replace TTM videos, but rather be on the days that I don't have TTMs or box breaks to show off. So if it's a slow day, you can at least probably look forward to at least one of these videos. So let me know what you guys think of the video down below. I'm excited. I'm actually about to record about the first five of them right now so that I can start getting them out to you guys. And I'll probably do a few recording sessions here and there and try to get them all recorded as soon as possible so we can upload them sooner rather than later. Till next time, I'll see you guys in the very first video, which I will link in the description down below once it goes live. But until then, have a good one. See ya.